Hello everybody and welcome to Project Trade. This is the Technical Indicators Show and in this one we're talking about the Williams Percent Range Indicator created by the 1987 World Cup Futures Trading Champion of the World, Larry the Tax Protester Williams. It was released in his 1973 book humbly named How I Made $1 Million Last Year Trading Commodities. Larry Williams front running big game clickbait titles in the 1970s there. You wouldn't think he'd need to do that after earning a million dollars the year before whilst trading commodities but there we go. Some people just can't help themselves. The Williams Percent Range is a momentum-based oscillator which is going to appear under your price chart. There's just a single line to it which oscillates up or down depending on its reading and it is a bounded oscillator with fixed outer limits of 0 and minus 100. So those are your maximum and minimum possible readings. In its traditional Larry Williams form, it's intended to be used to find overbought or oversold areas of price. The levels he recommended best for use are the minus 20 and minus 80 levels. So if the oscillator is reading between 0 and minus 20 then that means that price is in overbought territory and if it's reading between minus 80 and minus 100 then it could be considered to be an oversold territory. The indicator defaults at a 14 period look back but you do have the power to make that number of periods whatever you please. But let's check out the formula on this one see how it does its thing. There it is so we've got three key components in the mix with our highest high if we're using that default 14 period look back and that is simply the highest price from those 14 periods with our lowest low convert sleep being the lowest price in the last 14 periods. Then the final part is the current period's closing price. Essentially the formula is trying to figure out how close the highest high and lowest low are to the current closing price. And then the icing on the strawberry cheesecake is where the formula puts it into that 0 to minus 100 scale by multiplying it by minus 100. I suppose Larry wanted the negative 100 for the scale because otherwise it may have been confusing with a positive scale of 0 to 100 because the higher number would then mean oversold and and the lower would mean overbought. I'd be making a pros and cons list on that one, but after all that calculating and computation, that is what it looks like, the single line oscillator with the default minus 20 and minus 80 levels with a 14 period input. Here it is again, this time in its natural habitat alongside the actual price. Doesn't it look great? So if we are using the Williams percent range, what entry signals can we get out of it for our trades? As we've said, you've got those default overbought oversold levels of minus 20 and minus 80. The idea is that you're trying to pick out a reversal by entering a sell trade in the overbought territory or a buy trade in the oversold area. It's quite common for traders using this strategy to enter the trade when the oscillator is leaving those levels. So for example if price has become overbought then the sell trade could be entered when the indicator reading falls below minus 20. It's coming out of that overbought state. It's intended as a signal that a potential price reversal is here but perhaps unsurprisingly like any indicator that tries to pick out reversals it will struggle to actually do that. You are going to need a strong filtering process or a nifty money management system to make consistent profits from targeting this as your main trade entry signal. What about if we change those levels? So we're still targeting the shaky reversals, but we're not using the standard minus 20 and minus 80 lines. It's a bit convoluted on the chart, but we've got three different Williams percent range oscillators with varied overbought oversold levels, but applied to the same price action. We'll start at the top in the pink. Those are the minus 10 and minus 90 levels. So if you are going for those reversals, these levels are going to give the least signals of the three sets. That does also mean though that they're likely going to have a higher probability of some sort of reversal in price action actually coming to fruition. Then wedged in the middle are those standard minus 20, minus 80 levels, giving you a lot of similar signals to the minus 10 and minus 90, but with a couple more inconsistent areas of crossover. The signals look a bit harder to manage there. And finally, at the bottom, you can see some minus 30, minus 70 levels, which are going to give you the most most signals. They can often get in and stay in the overbought oversold territory for a while, making it suddenly a lot more difficult to time that reversal trade. Or if you're entering your trade as the oscillator leaves those overbought oversold zones, it can easily cut right back into it and leave you wondering what to do next. So I have to say from my perspective of fact, these levels are extremely unlikely to prove effective and therefore the default levels of minus 20, minus 80 levels should probably be the absolute minimum you put those levels if you are 
trying to use the indicator for reversals. Another groundbreaking thought option here could be changing the number of inputs away from that default of 14. Let's pull up three Williams percent range oscillators again. All the levels for these are set as the default minus 20 and minus 80, but this time they each have different periods input into them. At the top is a slower 40 period input, and you can see in this instance the signals actually aren't too dissimilar on that indicator from the standard 14 period input in the middle. On the left there, the pink 40 input does keep you out of a couple trades, but they're not worlds apart from where the 14 period input is going to get you in as well. Then at the bottom of the stack is our yellow speedy quick 5 period input, which is giving you a few more trades. That's always going to be the case for the period input that low. It is going to rush you into trades, and it's unlikely to be what you're after unless you're really trying to sneak extra quick profits and more power to you if that's your game. Go get them with that 5 period input. None of these choices or any other period input is necessarily good or bad though, it's all about how you use them. If changing the number of inputs or where the levels are doesn't work for you, what about changing both the levels and the inputs? Yeah, it's an option. Have a fiddle with those settings. There is so many combinations out there to be tested that you could spend an entire lifetime doing nothing else but studying the Williams percent range, trying to attain the perfect levels and inputs across all assets and timeframes. That means no family for you, no friends, no band, no improv class. You'll not even have any income coming in because you can't stand the idea of putting on a real trade without having discovered those true optimal settings of the indicator. You're sleeping in a shop front and using public library internet to do your work. You are drinking puddle water, eating cigarette butts, watching your favourite soap opera through a shop window before being shooed along by some jackass. Is it worth it? Maybe. I don't know. It's your life. And don't you forget. But do remember that much like with a lot of indicators that are advertised as being typically used for overbought and oversold signals, you don't have to actually end up being overly focused on using them in that specific manner. You can always use a momentum indicator like the Williams percent range for helping you try and find that trend early on in the move instead of waiting for its reversal. So when the oscillator crosses above minus 40 to say minus 39.99, you could immediately enter a buy trade and try to catch some of that rising momentum well before it even gets to being overbought. And on the flippity flip, if the oscillator crossed below minus 60, you could take that as a signal to enter a sell trade. Here's about what that'll look like in a real life daily gold chart that I managed to perfectly cherry pick. We can see on the left, the Williams percent range crossed above 60 and you entered a buy trade, which held for a long while on the rise there until that big drop off on the far right. Even after that drop off though it still should have netted you master gains especially with a solid trailing stop loss or a healthy dose of blind luck. It doesn't have to be two levels that you're using though you could just use a one line right at the center the minus 50 line. Here's an example in this instance we're using it as a filter for our other entry indicators and saying okay if the Williams percent range reading is above minus 50 then I'm only going to enter buy trades and if it's below minus 50 then I'm only going to enter sell trades. This would hopefully remove some of those losing trades from your strategy. Those are just a few of the more obvious entry signals coming from the indicator. When it is combined with other indicators, those signals can then be tweaked to best fit the overall strategy. Let's move on to our money management as capital protection is key in trading. So how exactly can the Williams percent range help us in this endeavor to save us from losses and push us towards profits? Firstly, it's going to depend on what type of trades your strategy is targeting. It could be the that you're in a reversal strategy, a trend strategy, a range based strategy. The Williams percent range does have options for you though. If you're using the traditional overbought, oversold reversal signals for your entries, then you could take profit back near the centerline reading of the Williams percent range or stop your loss if it becomes overbought or oversold again. Let me explain as an example. Say that the Williams percent range reads at minus 18, which is indicating that it's overbought. It then comes down in value out of the overbought territory to minus 21. So you enter a sell trade to try and catch that tremendous reversal. You could then set your rules that you will take profit if the Williams percent range gets to minus 40 or minus 50 near the center and that you will stop your loss if it crosses back past minus 20 into the overbought territory again. This gives you possibilities should the trade move either in your favor or against you. If other readings seem like slight improvements on those then have a play and get it to the optimum. Doesn't always have to be a number that ends in zero. Now let's say that you're using the Williams percent range for mental to get you into trend trades instead of the reversals. Doesn't always have to be about reversals. So if you were to enter a buy trade when the Williams percent range reading goes above minus 40, you could take profit if it reaches the overbought status at say a minus 20 reading, as that would hint the momentum at that point had exhausted. Or you could stop your loss if 
it recrosses beneath the minus 40 level as that's a fair signal that the trend is not taking off as it looked like it might have. However you're trading, if you want the Williams percent range to help you with your money management, it can do that. But I will say, in my opinion, you are very likely to be able to find better money management systems out there than letting it all ride on the Williams percent range. In the markets, you'll probably find that these overbought, oversold readings work better on stocks where traders are more likely to take their profits in particular stages, allowing price to consolidate. This does happen in other markets too, like Forex, commodities and energies, but it is a bit clearer on stocks, especially especially if they've had a news result which market participants are watching closely and trading on. Think of it in terms of a more volatile asset like the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. When it goes on a run or a fall, it gets overbought, oversold, and it does not care what your Williams percent range is telling you. It is moving on. But if you are using it as a trend finding momentum indicator or as a filter on your other trend indicators, that's going to be as consistent or inconsistent across all markets. And beware the gaps. A big gap in a pre market situation could really throw off your Williams percent range for a minute before the market readjusts itself at the beginning of a new day. If you're looking for similar indicators, there's plenty out there. They're all the good ones, all the classics. We'll start with the stochastic oscillator indicator. Rightly or wrongly, it is much beloved. Here it is side by side with the Williams percent range, both using 14 periods. And you can see the similarity in terms of when their lines go through to overbought or oversold territory. And in their formulas, they are basically doing the same thing, measuring lows and highs compared to the close, hence why those visuals are coming out so similar. But sometimes in the trading world, a small difference in readings can mean a large difference in profits. So do be sure to back test them both against one another. In addition to those two, we've got the commodity channel index, also pretty similar. Let's throw that one on as well. In the purple line there at the bottom, you can see again that the dips and rises, they are about the same. Sometimes one will give you a slightly different reading than the other, but there's not much new to say about it. Finally, who could forget our old friend, the relative strength index. We'll add it in red at the bottom there. And although it's giving you less signals than the other indicators above it, you can see that the general trend of peaks and troughs are of a similar nature to those other indicators. And there's a lot more oscillators out there trying to find overbought, oversold signals. There is definitely no shortage for you to be able to practice with. In conclusion, the Williams percent range, how is it doing? As we discussed, the default standard edition gives you those overbought, oversold signals from the minus 20 20 minus 80 levels aiming to get you onto those reversals in trend where the momentum has allegedly exhausted. I don't find these type of signals the most reliable but you can change those levels and the inputs across different markets to try for a more effective methodology of use. And let's be really real, there's only conformity and a one track sheet minded approach to general thought that might be stopping you from using the indicator to help you try and find trends instead or act as a money management tool for you exiting your trades. So there is a variety of uses for the Williams percent range, but that certainly doesn't mean that any of them are going to work for you in any given setting. And does it set itself apart from those similar indicators like the stochastic oscillator, the commodity channel index, the relative strength index? Probably not. Each of them can do a little better or a little worse than one another in different situations and markets. So it's going to be important to back test your strategies, practice with demo money, and make sure to stick to the rules you set for your system. Build the system and profits will come. Charter dreams, fun movie. And that is it, but there is more information and links in the description if you do want greater knowledge on Larry Williams, his indicator, or public library internet. And never forget how every single chart in this video has been specifically pre-selected for showing you how the indicator may or may not work. Gains always appear closer than they actually are, but I have used this indicator in live forward testing strategies, and those will also be linked in the video description. This is Project Trade, and I am the Minister of Trade. Thank you for watching or listening.